Welcome to the Words to Empower television broadcast, featuring Frank and Jackie Stewart, pastor and first lady of the Axe Ministries. And now, Frank and Jackie Stewart. Welcome back to the Words to Empower broadcast with Pastor Frank and Lady J. We're so glad to have you on today. We are continuing our study of leaving our children a legacy of healing. Yes, absolutely. And so we discussed this last week and we're continuing on in the same vein about healing for our children and, and leaving that legacy, God-given legacy to our children, Pastor. And, and, and just to understand that, that legacy that they need, uh, we leave physical things, but this, are, this is uh, an eternal thing. Uh, this is this is something they need because it is uh, that increase in your faith in God and having faith in God then God can do this. You know, we, we talked about on last week, just before we got off the air, we talked about uh, the little boy that had the five barley loaves and, and the two fish that Jesus used to feed 5,000 men, not counting women and children, probably 10, 15,000 people he fed. But I just think about the impact that they had, that that had on that young boy. And I think about miraculous things that happened in my childhood, miraculous things that God did early in life. Brothers and sisters, it's nothing like it. It, it, it gives you a foundation as you move into life, into adulthood, just having, just knowing Jesus as a healer, knowing Jesus that he's a miracle worker, knowing that early in life, it changes your whole life. It, it takes you to another dimension in living. So it's so important that we pour into our children. We help them to understand uh, who the Lord Jesus is because that is that he is eternal life, knowing mm -hmm. him, John said. And that's part of our spiritual legacy that we leave our children. And last week I kind of uh, mentioned that um, leaving our children a legacy of healing is not just leaving them healing alone. It's so many other blessings attached to it. Uh, prayer of faith. Yes. When we learn how to teach our children how to pray so that they pray believing, then they shall receive, even in the area of healing. And so it's part of um, teaching our children to progress. You may start off with, now I lay me down to sleep, but then you move to the Lord's Prayer, and then you move to praying the prayer of faith and, and letting them be around you while you are praying. Absolutely. Let them, let them hear you call on the name of the Lord and let them um, take turns as you go to school praying. And you teach your children how to pray so that they will have the same legacy of healing, but the legacy of healing won't come if they don't have all of these other components attached to it. It's where they pick up the mantle. It's where, Elijah, you have the mantle, but Elisha is going to pick up that mantle, and he's going to walk in the power of Elijah that God has given unto him with that same mantle that he has left behind. We talked about a legacy of something that is th that's bequeathed, that's inherited, that's um, given to another, something that's um, bequeathed to another after a person has passed on or went on. And Elijah, he went on up in that chariot of fire, um, that whirlwind. And so um, he left that for Elisha. We have to leave something for our children so that when we're dead and gone, when we leave off the scene, they're not wary, they're not frustrated, they're not fearful, they're not full of anxiety. They, they're not saying, I don't know what we gonna do, mama's gone. Have you, have you ever had families or, or funerals and then the, everything falls apart because mama's gone or daddy's gone. Yes. Because that legacy was not, that mantle was not picked up. That legacy was not passed on. So that next generation is lost because the legacy was of healing was not passed on. And you know, one thing you said, not only to pass on, but uh, Elisha picked that mantle up. Mm -hmm. And and so we have, to, we, have to, we have to not only uh, make it available for, to our children, grandchildren, and passing that on, and uh, we have to we have to help them and encourage them to pick that mantle up, because you're going to need it. Sometimes uh, the next generation will recognize how much they're going to need it, and sometimes we rely. You know, you look at Elijah; he's relying on Elijah faith, 
And that's in our lives. We rely on mama faith. Mama, I need you to pray. Dad, I need you to pray. Can mm -hmm. you lay your hands on me? Mm -hmm. We're relying on somebody else to pray somebody else's faith. But brothers and sisters, it's going to come a time where we're going to need, you're going to need to have faith in God for yourself and for somebody else that need help. So we're going to go and we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about uh, a mother brings her daughter to Jesus. And this is the Seraphonician woman. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about different parents, how they brought their children to Jesus or to the man of God to the house of God. Mm -hmm. They brought them when they had an emergency and it was beyond the reach of medical science. It was beyond the reach of, of any doctor or whatever. They knew what to do. So we're going to start off talking about uh, this mother. She brings her daughter to Jesus. Yes, and this was our part of this passage of scripture was one of our key verses last week, Mark chapter 7, verse 27. But well, we're going to start reading at verse 25 through 30. So read along with us, pull out those Bibles, those PCs, those electronic devices, your phones, and go to your Bible app and read along with us in the New King James Version. And it says, for a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him, heard about Jesus, and she came and fell at Jesus' feet. The woman was a Greek, a Seraphonician by birth, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, Let the children be filled first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for this saying, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. And when she had come to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. So here's this mother. She has a problem and it, it, it's, it's incurable. She has a problem. It is, not, is beyond the physical. Uh, many times we see in Jesus' day that uh, demons manifested themselves as certain diseases and sicknesses. So, so here in that first verse it says the woman had a young daughter. I want you to see that. She had a young daughter and her daughter needed help. Now, she has to go outside her culture because you, you're dealing with the culture she's living in. Mm -hmm. And she has to go outside of her culture and she has to have faith. She has to have determination, but she's going for her daughter. There is a love here. There is a persistence here. She is not willing to take no for an answer as we look at this story. And we also, also have to notice that Jesus goes to this region. Yes. This is not a Jewish region. This is the area uh, uh, the Seraphonicians, and this is an era where it's not predominantly Jewish. Jesus wants everybody here. It doesn't matter your nationality. It doesn't matter your your upbringing. It doesn't matter your financial status. It none of those things matter. He wants us all healed, made whole, saved, delivered, and set free from the hand of the enemy. And in our text today, this young girl has come from a region that's um, where p the occult uh, and where demonic activity is perpetuated. It's, it's not a Jewish city where people worship and praise God and, and she's come into contact with an unclean spirit at a young age. And so I, we talked about several weeks ago, fighting for our children. We talked about being there to stand in the gap, to be that person so it, in order to leave a legacy to our children of healing, we have to be in a place where we can help them. We have to be in a position where we have um, the ability to pour into them. And so this unclean spirit um, fell um, on her daughter, and this, this demon um, needs to be cast out. We talk, we're talking about healing. And so the regular physicians, they don't, they don't specialize in casting out demons. Right. And so there is no doctor in the land she can go to. There is no, there's no person in her f vicinity 
So she has to come to Jesus, the man of God. She has to come where she can get hope and get healing and get wholeness. And it's often found in the church. It's often found with the people of God. It's often found with the man and the woman of God. So she brings, well, she comes and she stands proxy. Sometimes we can't always physically bring our children to a specific location, but in prayer, in supplication, in petitions to God, we can bring our children and our grandchildren before the Lord in prayer Amen. and, and, and to download into them so that they can see we are taking them to the throne of grace. Amen. There's no distance in prayer. And, and we see that and we learn that even the Old Testament principle, when Aaron went in, he took, the, he took those 12 tribes with him. They were on his virtue. They, he took those stones that represented them. They went in with him. So because he represented all of them. So when we go, we, you know, I make it a habit when praying says, Lord, we come, but we don't come by ourselves. We bring our children. We bring our mm -hmm. grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And we know that you know where they are and you are where they are. So it's, it's so important that here, uh, this mother, mm -hmm. this is a mother. Yes. This is a mother. She loves her daughter and she's watching her daughter. How painful that must have been. Mm -hmm. She's watching her daughter go through what she's going through, whatever sickness or whatever seizures or whatever was happening, this demonic possession, whatever was doing in her body. And this was something that in, in, in their culture, it wasn't like out of the ordinary. In their culture, uh, they, 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 you know, there was some worship of this. There was some things here going on. They didn't think this was out of ordinary. They they knew that this was real. And, and I think that in our day and time, there's so much we don't understand. You know, I was looking at, at the second largest uh, holiday that we spend money on. The second largest, and that kind of was amazing to me. I know Christmas will probably be number one, but the number two holiday is Halloween. And, and we see the, the retail shops and you see in the world $60 how, billion dollars? how wow. they, they have skipped over Thanksgiving. You, you know, you used to could, you know, shop for Thanksgiving and, and fall and, and different things. But now you can't hardly even get to Thanksgiving because they went gone from um, Halloween to Christmas. Amen. And we understand that there is a, a natural worship. There is, uh, you know, we understand that there is a group of people that do that. So, so when you think about that, when you think about what is going on in the culture that our children are living in, then it, it, it is upon us as adults, as parents, to be able to bring them, to take them to Jesus. All right. So we'll be right back few more messages after this break, but join us on the other side of this break because we have something very important to continue to talk to you about. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Acts Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do 
we have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. And I'm Jacqueline Stewart. We want to invite you to our program. I am the pastor of Axe Ministries, located in Conway, Arkansas, and also in North Little Rock, Arkansas. So join us every Sunday at 4 p.m. right here on VTN for our Words to Empower television broadcast. and engaging in this conversation and we're talking about the Seraphonician woman who comes to Jesus looking for healing for her daughter who's been grievously vexed with this demon and um, we see how um, the writer Mark tells us that um, Jesus listens to her she's pleading with Jesus but Jesus says let the children be filled first he says and he says it's not right to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. He said, I, I'm not supposed to be taking what's on the children's plate off of the table and then casting it out to the dogs that are out in the yard, the dogs that are, you know, um, even in the house, the dogs. But the lady, she has such perseverance and such faith. She is fighting for uh, a deliverance for her, her daughter that she says to Jesus, she says, yes, Lord, you, you're right you're not supposed to take the bread off the children's plate. Right. You're not supposed to take the food out of their mouth. You're not supposed yes, to take yes. what's been when rightfully theirs and cast it to the dogs who are not even human beings. Who are not. She says, but remember that the little dogs in the house, they eat the crumbs off the floor wow. that fall from the master's table. So if you could just give me a crumb, mm, <laughs> mm, mm. the power of a crumb, yes. if you could just give me, and, and as you said in last week's lesson, healing was compared to food or bread and so the bread has crumbs and so she says if you could just give me a little crumb right. of the bread that that the children are eating my daughter will be made whole we don't understand the power That's that it. we have in prayer and the power that we have in healing and there, there's so much healing even in a crumb that that the Lord saying I want you to have that Amen. I want you to have the loaf and the crumbs. I want you to have that and the power that's there. And this woman is this woman is fighting. You tell me I fight for our children. This woman mm -hmm. says she is mm -hmm. not going to give up because, you know, the disciples, the disciples that said send her away. Yes. You know, and that kind of represents, you know, some people sometimes say so she's mm -hmm. crying out to us. You know, she's she's different from us. She ain't dressed the way we dress. You know, and she's a, making she's a, all this noise. All yeah, this she's to a do disturbance. And it's kind of like whining and crying. And yeah, kind of like blind Bartimaeus when they told him to be quiet and see people telling him to shut up, shut up. But but here, this woman is coming for her daughter, and you know what? This is a mother, and she is going, and she has been insulted, sent her away. Uh, she's been called a dog because she understood that not worshiping the one and true God, that's what it put her as a Gentiles, but not even as Gentiles. When you get into Paul writing, uh, he, he even calls some of those that were of the house of Israel, they was like dogs. So, uh, when we see this, her push, not for herself, No. she's not taking all this for herself. 
But what I love, what I love is the determination. Mm -hmm. How many of us would have walked away? Well, if you're going to say that about me, I'm, I'm leaving. If you're going to say, send me away, I'm going to leave. How, how many of us have walked away from something that God wanted us to have mm -hmm. because we felt insulted or we got into our feelings, really? We got into our feelings and what God wanted us to have, the devil cheated us out of it. Mm -hmm. The devil cheated us out of it because he will come to tempt you he will come to tempt you to become, become frustrated. He wants to come to tempt you to be offended. And the Bible talks about that. He wants you to be offended because he recognized that. So there's a temptation to be offended here. This woman passes that for her daughter. She also passes the test of the religious world, the disciples. They're saying, send her away. She doesn't get to get any of the healing. She, she should not receive any of this healing. And there are organizations, there, there are people, there are religious leaders who will tell you that healing was just for the, the Bible days, that healing, there's no divine healing now, that healing is not a part of what God wants us to have as we walk with him. But that's contrary to scriptures. God wants us healed. He didn't do all these miracle signs and wonders in the New Testament for, for them to stop right. with the apostles. Right. No. It's for the church. These signs it's shall follow, follow them, them that, that believe. Right. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And you know Lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. And so this is part of our legacy that we should be leaving to our children to teach them how to anoint our children with oil, pray the prayer of faith over them when they get sick so that they know when it's their turn, they know what to do. But if we haven't done our due diligence and studied God's word on healing, we cannot leave a, a, a healing legacy if Amen. we don't have healing in us. Amen. And so the Lord wants, to, he shows us so many passages of scripture, both Old and New Testament. Um, the Gospels and the Epistles. He shows us the healing power of God that he wants in all of our lives. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's showing us. He's teaching us. He's teaching us. And the Bible says, because she was so persistent, persistent, and it says when she got home, she got home. Mm -hmm. She had a miracle. Yes. And yes. the Bible says that her daughter was lying on the bed. And you know, the thing that is powerful here is that the daughter now has a testimony. Mm -hmm. Now, we talk about Abraham being the father of faith, but the impact that it had on Isaac, the impact. It's the reason why the Bible says that God says, I'm the God of Abraham, mm -hmm. Isaac, mm -hmm. and Jacob. He didn't say, Abraham, leave out Isaac, jump to Jacob. Well, I'm just the God of Abraham. No, I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. I'm the God of Abraham. I'm, I'm the God of Abraham's son, Isaac. It's a reason for that. When Isaac goes up there on the mountain and, 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 and he asked the father, now we see everything, but where's the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. And Abraham began to explain to him, when you experience certain things at a young age, uh, mm -hmm. it, it sets the tone for your life. When you experience the omnipotent God of the universe, the realness of God, when you experience that early, it, it, it gets you on a flow. It, it, it does something to you. So when we see this young girl, it says young girl, young daughter, the impact it must have had on her life mm -hmm. to recognize what was going, what, what had happened, because she was very aware. Mm -hmm. She was very aware, and even in the midst of being tormented, and understand she was something inside of her that she could not control and wrestling with that. And, and wherever this mm -hmm. came from, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever door was open, right. whatever been tapped into. Mm -hmm. And we understand the culture here. Mm -hmm. They dealt in a lot of demonic stuff. We understand mm -hmm. the culture. But this young girl, she would never be the same the rest of her life. Never, never. To experience your own testimony of healing, it goes a long way. And, and you can never speak enough 
about what God has done for you. When Paul is on the road to Damascus and he has that blinding light to shine down on her, he's knocked off his beast. He encounters the Lord Jesus Christ for himself. That became his testimony everywhere he went. He was able to share that with Festus and Felix and, and the governor. He's able to share that wherever he goes. And so this young girl, she's able to, to share from a young age. And I was, I was speaking with someone and they said they were 15 years old. And the first thing came to my mind was, I was 15 years old when God saved me, when he filled me with his precious power of his Holy Ghost. And he saved me and changed my life, revolutionized my life. I said, you're at a wonderful age for God to do something for yes, you like yes. never before. So even being able to, to say, God is able to use children, speak to children, um, give them a legacy of where they're able to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, where they're able to speak a word because somebody has poured into them, somebody has spoken into them, somebody has left a legacy in them. And sometimes it's not always mother or daddy. Sometimes it's granddaddy, sometimes it's grandmother, sometimes it's um, a brother, a sister, an uncle, a friend, uh, a pastor, a teacher, a mentor. Uh, it could be someone in your ministry. So the Lord is wanting us to pour into people, leave that healing legacy in the next generation so that they can pour it into the following generation. Amen, amen, amen. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us, he wants us to pass it on. He mm -hmm. wants us to pour into that next generation. Pay it forward. Yeah, pay it forward. Pay it forward. Amen, that's what he wants to do. Let us, let us pray, let us pray to God as as we are asking him to do some incredible things. And the Bible says, ask and it shall be given, brothers and sisters. Yes. Everyone that asks is receiveth. Father, we come now asking, asking Lord God for your very best, your very best to come out of us, to be poured into the next generation, our children and grandchildren. And we just thank you for doing it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast on today. We look forward to seeing you next week. Now, we do have a new website. We want you to go to axwte.org and connect with us there, as well as a new prayer request line where you can send in and text in or email in your prayer requests and send them to prayer at axwte.org. Once again, that's prayer at xwte.org. We'd love to connect with you there and pray for you. Until next week, we love you to life and have a wonderful week. Amen. God bless you. The Axe Ministries is located at 1423 Ingram in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock. Call 501-329-2055 or go to axeministriesonline.org for more information. We would love you to partner with our ministry. Please go to our website, axeministriesonline.org, and find out how you can partner with us. For your gifts, please click on the Donate Online button or text the amount you wish to give to 501-302-4242.